Um, for our assignment, you're going to need to do a couple things. One, obviously, you're going to need to be shooting tethered, um, and you're going to be need to sh you're going to need to be shooting in black and white. Um, so there are two places you need to set that up. One is on your camera, um, and one is going to be in Lightroom. Um, you should know how to set it up in your camera because we did that in assignment one um, on my friend Canon here. Uh, I'm going to get to it by hitting that little uh, circle button, whatever the hell it is, K picture styles. Here, here camera, come, come look at it. You see it? It's right there, right there, picture styles. Um, and it gives me a bunch of options. The one that I want is monochrome. Um, so I select that, awesome. Um, again, this is just going to affect what I see in the back of my camera. I'm shooting raw. You should be shooting raw too. Um, so that means that it's not going to actually change what I get in um, the computer. Uh, so for that, we're going to need to make an adjustment in Lightroom. So if I take a picture right now in black and white, um, Um, you'll notice that it comes in black and white for an instant and then immediately reverts back to color. Um, so I would need to go in here to Quick Develop. Um, I can set the color to black and white. Um, that will give me what I want. If I'm going to keep shooting like this, which I am, um, I want to go into Develop and do that same thing that we did before, turn into black and white. Um, cool. Again, I can go in. If I need to do any black and white adjustments, I can do those there. Um, if I have any overall like highlights adjustments, anything that I need to do, um, I can do that. Um, and then I'm going to make a preset. Uh, now you'll notice right now I have my develop settings to same as previous. Um, that can be super helpful. I can set it there and then I can just make adjustments as I go. Um, in general, you're going to want to not do that, and you're going to want to go ahead and make a custom user preset. Um, so let's go ahead and make a preset. Black and white portrait. Awesome. Um, I want to include treatment and profile. All right, black and white mix, if I have any. Um, I don't have any I have any basic exposure adjustments. Let's include those there. Why not? Um, include the process version just because, uh, and then go ahead and hit create. Um, now I'm going to go back in here to my capture user presets. Uh, where are we? Black and white portrait. Great. Um, now if I go ahead and take a picture again. Um, and it's going to bring those in using the uh, settings to that preset that we just selected. Um, so that's going to be the most important thing that you do in setting up your technical side of things. Um, I'll go through a little bit of what you can do as far as improvising a studio in your living space. Um, but for now, that should be good. Uh, I'm going to walk through um, one other technical thing um, on how you can set this up if your camera doesn't tether to Lightroom. Um, so if that's you, some of the Sony people, maybe some other folks, if you're having problems with that, um, if you need to tether using a uh, third-party um, program, um, Keep watching and I'll walk through a little bit how that will work. Um, if you have a camera that will not directly tether to Lightroom or Lightroom cannot control it specifically, um, we can still use uh, your camera's utility program as a way to connect um, and sort of shoot tethered um, a slightly modified way. The way that we're going to do that, bear with me, I don't really remember. Go in here to, it's going to be monitoring a folder um, in Lightroom. Go down to auto import. 
auto import settings. Um, then you need to make a watched folder. That is going to be the folder that Lightroom, as soon as anything pops in there, Lightroom grabs it, brings it into your catalog. Um, so with whatever utility you're using, and that thing is that I've totally forgotten and blocked out of my mind. Um, you would set that up to shoot to a particular folder. Then you would go ahead in here into auto import, choose that folder. Um, I'll just uh, choose that. Um, then anything that went in there, uh, Lightroom will take it and move it to wherever it should go. Um, I'm going to put it here, tether test raw. Um, we'll make a subfolder. Uh, I could call this. I don't know, auto imported photos, that seems kind of reasonable. Um, you can set up the file naming the same way that you would um, in uh, your standard way of doing things, develop settings. Um, here's where it would be a little bit different. Um, I would set my develop settings here. That means that if I'm shooting, I'm essentially shooting an unprocessed file and then that file is coming to Lightroom and then I'm modifying it. So you may need to shoot a couple of frames, bring them into Lightroom, adjust them, see what you need, make a preset from that, and then set this up. Um, so what do we have here? Uh, black and white portrait, cool metadata, right? Same as everything else. Um, keywords, tethering, uh, remote, I don't know, whatever you want. Um, initial previews, uh, standard seems fine. Um, so once you've set up those options, um, you can then go into auto import and say enable auto import. Then anything that comes into that folder, whoop, um, Lightroom will grab it, pull it into the catalog and adjust it per whatever your preset was. Uh, obvious things, can't quit Lightroom. Um, and not in just a broke back mountain kind of way, um, if you quit Lightroom, obviously it's auto importing. Um, so pay attention to that. Um, so you have Lightroom open, whatever your capture utility is. Um, if you make any adjustments to have one, you need to go back into that um, auto adjustment and or auto import and adjust what preset you're using. Um, but other than that, it's pretty straightforward. This was a way that we did tethered shooting for quite a while um, before cameras and Lightroom moved along and meshed um, and made it easier for us. Uh, so it's a little bit more work, but generally speaking, still should uh, allow you to tether and shoot um, without a huge amount of difficulty. All right, cool. Let's figure out how to set up a home studio. Just got some ambient light in there. Gonna plug in the camera to the laptop. There's a cat. Now there's our ambient light. Putting a clip lamp. Whoa, overexposed. Put some tinfoil on it. Knock it down a little bit. Get secondary light. See if we can get some fill. Uh, light up that bed sheet a little bit with. That's uh, eh, okay. Kind of wrinkly. Not very dramatic. Uh, Put that second light behind. No, that is not that is not good at all. That's a little better. Better light on the sheet. Um, and that second light is still isn't great. Put some tin foil on it. Put it up there. Make it a hair light. Better. Uh, put a flag on it and uh, keep some light off of the sheet. Get a little bit closer, maybe. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty good. A little fill from a uh, white box. And we're good. Okay, here's our behind the scenes shoot wave. Okay, here's our 
some light up here with some tinfoil on it and another piece of tinfoil acting as a flag to keep it off of the background. Here we have this random book light that I found on my son's bed to give us some texture to this wrinkly ass sheet. Over there we've got a little bit of ambient from that. And then our main light is this clip lamp on the door that you now that you can move back and forth. And there is the Hannah, and there is my tethered workstation on some sort of freakish pink ball. You mean if all your stuff wasn't so big, um, I could. Oh, why don't you not show it to me so you don't break my laptop? Oh, I see it. There it is. You, sorry. you mean Pac Woman? Oh my God, it's Pac Woman! Holy smokes, Pac Woman! Well, it has to be Pac Woman because Pac Man is. Blue or red or whatever color it is. Yeah, it has a penis. Strawberry. Okay. Uh, no, all right, so that's <laughs> that's what we got. Key light is a flood bulb with tin foil. Uh, hair light is a flagged with tin foil. Another bulb, and our backdrop is this wrinkly ass sheet. Um, and washing that backdrop is this random LED book lamp. And then we get a little bit kick of ambient from that weird reading light. Okay, you say bye to everybody, Hannah? Bye-bye. Okay, thank you.